Hi class, for this module, I want to talk about graphing equations. Uh, let's review graphing. Uh, now, uh, I understand that the easiest way to graph an equation pretty much is you make table, you plot in some point. And of course, for uh, linear equations, uh, we have several methods to do it. So let's just make tables because for this modules we're not just graphing linear okay so you see making tables easy you just randomly pick points and usually we pick an uh, we pick negative zero and positive now i understand um linear equation is the easiest way is to figure out the slope and the y-intercept so the y-intercept is negative six the slope right here is two over one. So maybe graphing that way is the easiest way. So I have zero, negative six down here, and we go up two to the right one, and then we graph. So that's the easiest way. See right here, we have a negative slope. So let's start with the y-intercept, which is two right here. And then the slope is negative three over two. So we go up two, we go down three, we go to the right two. For negative, I always go down and then I always go to the right. Some people say that, oh yeah, you can go up and to the left for negative. I just wanna keep it consistent. Number four, as you can see, the other problems are easy because we have the slope y-intercept form. So for this one, the first thing you might wanna do is you wanna change it to slope y-intercept form, and that's really easy to do. So we just isolate y, right? And then over here, we have negative six. We go up three, one, two, three to the right one. So graphing linear is really easy now this is a special type you see we have y equals to five and this is how i graph the special case so i first locate y equals five so i think okay so very simple zero five right so it's right here okay so i'm gonna cross i'm gonna make uh i'm gonna make the line i know it's gonna be either horizontal or vertical if i do the vertical i just I'm just sketching the y-axis. So of course this has to be the horizontal. Y equals five. Okay, now the second method for graphing linear equation is the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So the x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis right here. So this is the x-intercept. The y-intercept is where the y crosses, the, the graph crosses the y-axis. So it's right here. So this is the y-intercept. Okay. As you can see, the x-intercept, we have the coordinate. Um, we always have the x values and the y is always zero. For the y-intercept, it's the opposite. The x has to be zero. The y-coordinate is a number b in this case it's just two okay so keep in mind that's how we solve for the x and the y intercept so for the x intercept we let y equal zero and then usually i just i just because we let y equals zero i just cover so i i just cover like i can just cross this one out right because that's gonna be zero. And then I solve for x. So in this case, x is gonna be negative seven. For y-intercept, you let x equal to zero. Okay, so in, I'm gonna cover x this time, and we solve for y. So in this case, y is negative three. There we have it, okay? So to be correct, you should always write your x-intercept and y-intercept as an order pair. Like that, okay? Now, the reason we want to do that so we can we can find two points and we can plot the points and graph the um, the equation. Now you can see that for this problem right here, 
the x-intercept and the y-intercept are not whole numbers. So let's just solve it really quickly. x-intercept, y is going to be 0. So x is y0. x, x in this case is going to be uh, 14 over negative 8. So you might want to reduce it. So I, if I divide by two, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put negative um, on top. So negative seven fourths. For the y-intercept, we let x equal to zero. So y is gonna be 14 over five. Now you can see that if I ask you to graph this equation, it's gonna be really hard because we're dealing with fraction, right? So now, graph the line whose x-intercept is 2 and y-intercept is negative 8. This, this one is super easy because we have whole numbers. And um, notice that we only need two points. So the x-intercept, 2, right here. y-intercept, negative 8. So it's right here. We just need two points to graph a straight line. All right? So that's one method for graphing the equation. First, we find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, and then we graph. So x-intercept, like I said, y equal to 0. So x in this case is going to be 6. y-intercept, x equals 0. y is going to be negative 3. Okay, so x6 right here, y negative 3. And then we graph. Mm -hmm. Now, it's really easy when we, when we have whole numbers. When we have fractions, then the slope y-intercept form is going to be easier. Okay, and given any, uh, any graphs of a function, you should be able to locate the y-intercept and the x-intercept. So you see right here, the x-intercept is where we cross the x-axis. So in this case, is negative 1, 0. And 3, 0. The y-intercept is right here. So this is x-intercept. The y-intercept is negative 2. I'm sorry, negative 1. So we have 0, negative 1 for the y-intercept. Okay. So we have two points for x-intercept, and we have one point for y-intercept. All right, now if we graph a different function like the absolute values function, hopefully you still remember the absolute function is a V-shape. So in this case, I'm just going to plot some points. Now, it's, uh, it's always helpful if you pick a negative, a positive, and a zero. So in this case, I'm going to pick negative 1. 0 and 1. You can pick 2 if you want, but 2 times 5 is going to be 10. So it's kind of it's kind of um, big. So negative 1, you plug it in, you're going to get 5. 0, you plug it in, you're going to get 0. And 1, you plug it in, you're going to get 5. Okay, so graphing 0, 0, negative 1, 5. And 1, 5. So it's right here. I'm going to do 2 as well. So 2, negative 2 should give you 10. And positive 2 should give you 10. There we go. V-shape. Okay. So hopefully you still remember that. Moving on to number 13. So this time we have a parabola, right? By the way, even if I didn't mention graphing the parabola, when you look at the problem, you see x squared, you should, you should know that this is in fact a parabola. 
okay? And hopefully you see a negative, you know it's gonna be open uh, downward, okay? But in this case, if you want to plot some points, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna do zero, zero. Oh, by the way, I know it's a parabola, so I know the left and the right is gonna be identical. So you pick point, you should put, you should pick the point left and right, left and right of the vertex. So in this case, the vertex is zero, zero. I'm gonna pick left of the vertex, which is negative one, and then right is gonna be positive one. So negative one, I'm gonna get negative one. One, one square, and then you apply the negative, I'm gonna get negative one. If I put negative two, I'm going to get negative four, right? So hopefully you know that we have negative two here, square, you get four, but then you apply the negative, you get back to negative four. If I put two, we should get the same answer, which is negative four. So as you can see, we have this one, this one, this one, and this one. So it opens downward. So I understand that we can randomly pick points, but we should we shouldn't. We should pick good point. Okay. So hopefully you can recognize that this is zero negative six for the vertex. So let's say if I put if I let z, um, zero to be x, I'm gonna get negative six for y. You see, that's going to be the vertex. Okay. And like I mentioned earlier, you should pick left, right, left, right of the vertex. So I'm going to pick negative one, positive one, negative two, positive two. So negative one and positive one should give you the same answer. In this case, negative one squared is going to be one, one minus six, negative five. Same thing for one, so negative five. And then for two, negative two squared is four. Four minus six, negative two. Two squared, four. Four minus six, negative two. So we're going to plot the points now. Negative two is going to give you, um, negative two is going to be right here. And then we graph. There we have it. Okay. So this is the x cube, um, x cube function, the, the cube function, hopefully you remember is like that shape. Okay, so um, we have a fraction, so I'm going to try to pick a number that we can eliminate the fraction. So first, let's just pick zero because zero is going to give you zero. Um, I know that we can't really avoid fractions. So of course, if I have negative one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it up with a negative five fourth. A positive one, I'm gonna end it up with a five fourth. I understand is a, a fraction, but let's just work with that. But if I pick two, two Q, the fraction is going to cancel out, right? So if I have, if I pick two or negative two, five fourth, a negative two Q is going to give me negative eight. You see it's cancel out with a four. That's going to be negative two, negative two times five, negative 10. So if I pick two, I'm gonna get positive 10, okay? So I understand that the first uh, for one is gonna be a fraction. 
So zero zeros right here. And I understand we have fraction. So somewhere right here, somewhere right here. Two is going to be okay. So negative two is going to give me negative 10. And two is going to give me positive 10. So at least I have that shape. Curve and the curve. Okay. So hopefully you know the basic, uh, the graphs of the basic function. When I say basic, I'm talking about linear square, uh, linear square root, square cube, and absolute values, oh, and even rational, okay? So hopefully you still remember the slope of the function. So the slope is rise over run, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So hopefully you still remember that. Okay. Now, if you have the graph, it's really easy to figure out the slope. You see right here, it should be a negative slope. So hopefully you, rem or you recognize that. So I'm going to go from point 0.1 to point 0.2. And point, point 0.1 is always on the left. Point 0.2 is always on the right. So we read from left to right. So that's how I know. So now we're going to go down. One, two, three. Because it's down, so it's going to be negative 3. From here, you go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the slope is negative 3 over 4. Now, if you want, you can definitely get the two coordinates of the two points and use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But I always count when I have the graph when I see the graph. Okay, so I only use the formula when I have something like number 18, which is 6 minus negative 7 over negative 3 minus negative 7. Thirteen over four. Okay. So you can see right here when the slope, when zero on the bottom, so the slope is undefined, when zero on top, the slope equal to zero, okay? And these problems pretty much just asking you to change back and forth. So we have, we, we should be able to go back and forth. This is standard form, right? This is slope y-intercept. So for the slope y-intercept, you can recognize the slope right away and the y-intercept right away. So number 22 right here, you see we have standard form and we have, uh, if when I change it, I get the slope y-intercept form. So it's really easy. All these problems, they are review. You should be able to work it out easily. Okay, now, the reason we want to do that is because when you have standard form and they're asking you to graph like number 23, you simply go from standard form to slope y-intercept form. And then you recognize the slope, which is 2. And then we have the y-intercept right here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's negative. So it's negative 4. And we go up two to the right one. Okay. All right. So that's number 23. 24. Now, earlier, what we have is we have graphing the equation. Now we have to write the equation. So let's say given some information or given the graph of the equations, we should be able to write the equation. So in order for us to write equation, you need the slope. And you need one point. 
So this is what we need. Now, but in the case of number 24, it's really easy because they not, not only they give you a point, they give you the y-intercept. So it's really easy to just simply plug it in. So that's going to be the equation. For number 25, it's not so easy because they give you the slope and they give you a point. So we're going to use the same, the same form, y equals to mx plus b. Okay, and I plug it in and I solve for b. So y in this case, I'm going to use negative 3. It's provided. The slope is negative 3 half and x is negative 8 plus b. So our goal is to solve for b. Okay, so right here I have negative 3 equals to negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 3 is 12 plus b. So solving for b. It's going to be, so you subtract 12 minus 12. So b is going to be negative 15. So now I'm ready to write the form. y equals negative 3 half x minus 15. And that's going to be my answer, my equation. All right. So like I said, you just need the slope and a point. You see right here, number 26. They give you two points and they give you the graph. So what was given is not the slope. So, but because they give you the graph, you can just get the slope easily. How do we do that? We can just count like how we did earlier. So from point one, I go one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I know that the slope is going to be the slope is going to be four over six. Reduce it, we get two over three. Now you can definitely get the point. You can get the coordinate and use y2 and use the slope formula, y2 over y1, uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? From here, I'm just going to use the same method. I'm going to pick a point. So in this case, I'm going to pick 1, 2, mx plus b, right? So y, I'm going to pick the first, the, um, the top one. I'm going to pick this one. So y is going to be 2. Slope two third x one plus b. All right, so I'm gonna have two two third plus b. So it's gonna be two minus two third. That's how I get b. And of course, you can use LCD. So I'm gonna multiply this one by three LCD. Okay, so it's gonna be six minus two, so it's four third. So b is four third. This is b. So I'm just going to go back and plug it in. 2 third x plus 4 third. And that's how I get my answer. And I know for sure it's going to be a fraction for y-intercept because look at this. You see that? Fraction. Okay. All right. Moving on to number 27. Number 27 is a special case because I know that it's going to be a vertical horizontal. So I know it's going to be X equals something or Y equals something, right? So this is how I don't, I, I, I'm not trying to memorize anything. So for these two problems, I pretty much just say, so this is vertical. So what am I crossing? When I cross vertical, it's parallel to the Y axis, right? So I'm crossing the X. So it has to be X. So it's going to be X equals negative 2. Horizontal, this is horizontal. So horizontal, I'm crossing the y. So it's going to be y equal to 7. The one thing I need to point out is 
make sure when they ask you to write equation, you have to write x equals something, y equals something. Some people just simply write the numbers and numbers don't represent anything in this case. Okay, so you need an equation. Now, let's talk about parallel and perpendicular. So what are parallel and perpendicular? Two lines are parallel. Two lines. They are parallel if and only if the slope are the same. So the slope M1 has to be equal to M2. So M1 represents the slope of L1 and M2 represent the, the slope of L2. Now the two lines are perpendicular if and only if you have the opposite and reciprocal. Okay, so make sure you have two. So let's go back to our current problem. You see our current problem, the slope is three. That's the line that's given. Now they're asking you for the line that parallel to this line. So we need the same slope. So the slope has to be three. I'm gonna highlight the slope, okay? Now for the perpendicular, the slope is gonna be the opposite. So because we have a positive, so now we have a negative for the perpendicular and the reciprocal there, okay? So let's take care of number 20, uh, 20 29, pretty much you have to um, change it to uh, the slope intercept form first, and then from there, you can just figure out the slope uh, of parallel and perpendicular. So let's do it really quickly. So if I change, I'm gonna do it down here. Plus eight y equals to negative six. Make it two. Divide by eight. So the slope is gonna be negative one four. So that's gonna be the original slope. Now for parallel, it has to be exactly the same. And then for the slope of perpendicular, it's gonna be the reciprocal, which is four over one, and the opposite, which is positive. Okay. All right, now for number 31, we're gonna write the equation of the line that is parallel to this line and passes through the point. Okay, so earlier I mentioned that for, to write the equation, you need the slope and you need a point. We have both because the slope of the parallel is gonna be the same. So in this case, it's gonna be negative five. That's the slope, right? And then the point is negative two, two. So I'm just gonna plug it in. So y is gonna be two, slope is negative five, x is gonna be negative two plus b. So what I have is two equals to 10 plus b. So b is negative eight. So my equation is y equals negative five x minus eight. Okay, for part B. Now we need perpendicular. So the perpendicular, the slope is gonna be the opposite and reciprocal. So notice that originally we have negative five. Reciprocal is gonna be negative one five, one over five, and the opposite. So I take out the negative, so it's positive. All right. We're gonna do the same thing. Y equals mx plus b. Y is gonna be two. M is gonna be one fifth. And x is gonna be negative two plus b. 
So this time we're gonna deal with fraction. So I have two plus two fifths equals B. So two, the LCD is gonna be five. So I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by five. So I ended up with 10 plus two over five, which is 12 over five. So my equation is gonna be one fifth X plus 12 over five. And that's the perpendicular um, equation.